Hi, David. Thanks very much for agreeing to um, talk with me today about um, climate change, I think it's called normally. But we'll see what we want to call it in a minute. And I thought we'd kick off, really, with um, uh, you just introducing yourself a little bit and uh, in, in relevant to what we're going to talk about. So we could to hear um, a bit from you before we talk about climate change or whatever we're going to mm. call it. So... It's, John, it, it's, it's lovely to make this again because we've known each other for many years yeah. on and off. But thank you for Great. coming coming across to Meridian House. Great. Um, when people ask who, who I am, what do I do, and so on, it's always a bit complicated because I've got a, many many facets. In fact, to my my background to start with is in maths and physics, and then I have an, another degree in theology. I spent most of my life, however, in, in social science research looking at resistance to change in complex systems under stress, which is pretty well where we are t yeah. today in the really current relevant. environment. Um, that's involved organizational learning, um, operational research, complexity, psychodynamics of, of, of uh, resistance to change in, in human behavior, uh, and a whole range of other stuff, leading into complexity and, and cellular networks. Uh, mm -hmm. as well as systems analysis, which is what I brought to bear on climate change over the last six years. Right. The motivation for that is, is quite interesting because uh, we realized that the, the way humanity is, is changing, if you like, the parameters within which we live in terms of our, our climatic, climatic environment, would put particular stresses on the whole species over the coming years and decades. Mm -hmm. And uh, we needed to know much more clearly what kind of change we were facing mm. if we were to deal with the psychological resistance and enable effective response to that change. Mm. Yeah. And it wasn't clear enough right. six years ago, which yeah. is why we set aside everything we'd got for however long it took to try and get much clearer about the threats of climate change, the implications of climate change, and its link, of course, also to footprint overshoot to consumerism yeah. and the limits to growth as a world community. Yeah, so. And we've just completed that six-year program and are coming to publication now, so this interview couldn't be more timely. Very, very interesting. And uh, when you say we, could you give me a clue as to who <laughs> we are? And it's a bit the royal. Different, different bits of we that are involved. Oh, dear. Um, basically, I'm a networking person. Yeah. I do have a... Um, I founded in 1981 a small registered charitable research trust, minimum design, minimum structure to it, very flexible, uh, which we called the Unit for Research into Changing Institutions, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful mouthful, <laughs> very academic. So it shortens to U-R-C-H-I-N or Urchin, Urchin which right. kind of um, puts a tongue in cheek every time we use it. <laughs> it's um, so Urchin is a charitable trust. Yeah. and. Uh, I have a research assistant, who is now my wife, and work with colleagues all over the world uh, mm. in whatever way is appropriate. Mm. So it's a network, very flat yeah. organizational yeah. structure yeah. that is geared to problem solving as effectively mm. as we can and as flexibly as we can, multidisciplinary. Right. Um, in 1987, we took up the uh, leadership of the Meridian program, mm which was previously known as the Manhattan Project of Behavioral Sciences. And we had a, a workshop in, in what was then the Soviet Union, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, at, at which we looked at the need for enabling of large systems change under complex stresses, mm -hmm. which is exactly what I was working on. Mm -hmm. And I was then asked to take leadership of that particular project. So we, the Meridian program came home. Yeah. And we named our home after the Meridian program, which is interesting. Yeah. And then in uh, 2005, uh, we took on responsibility for the climate change research. Right. Uh, and after an initial presentation to the Club of Rome, which was an extraordinary uh, right. invitation to come out of nowhere as yeah. a result of the initial work we did, yeah. uh, we then put together a proposal for a research project on what we call feedback dynamics in right. climate change. Right. And that evolved. Uh, through a, a proposal to call it the Manhattan Project of Climate right. Change. Yeah. Which didn't go down a bundle. Uh, sort of weapons of mass destruction is <laughs> not where we started this game. Uh, and eventually, after a long talk with with James Lovelock and, and others, yeah. we called it the Apollo Gaia yeah. Project, the relationship between the sun yeah. and the earth. 
yeah. and how we have altered that by our yeah. use of fossil energy. Yeah, very good. That's a very clear introduction, and uh, it's so interesting that the sort of organisation you have is very um, seems to be very apt for the whole process of research and innovation and knowledge creation, which uh, I think I hadn't realised before how true that is. Yes.